Hi, I'm Carol Watson, and I am the Chief Thriver at Thrive.com, and I want to welcome the Thrive community to another Thrive Chat. For those of you that are new to this experience, we are doing weekly 20-minute conversations with industry thought leaders and recruiting and coaching experts that can help us um, manipulate the industry and figure out how to navigate um, our careers in the industry. So we welcome you all and we invite you to tweet your questions, share your comments, and um, chat on the message board. If there are questions that we can answer during the session, we will be happy to do that. And if there aren't, Natalie, I'm sure we'll be um, more than welcome to respond after the session. The Thrive Talks will be available on demand. They'll be archived, so you'll have the opportunity to check in and check them out and share them whenever you need it, even if it's two in the morning. So welcome to another, another Thrive Talk. We're excited that we have Natalie here with us live in our studio. And so I wanna welcome Natalie to a Thrive Talk and introduce her. Um, you can see her bio and hear all the great details um, that she shared. And she also did a, a blog post for us on the changes in job descriptions. So hope you'll take a look at that. So, uh, Natalie, to kick us off, give us some sense of what your role is at Update Graphics and, and what are you doing there? Well, um, my role primarily right now is uh, new business development and developing the Update Graphics brand and company itself. So, when I joined Update several years back, uh, the prodigy that I was, <laughs> um, I found a Sachi and Sachi studio found that I had a great rapport with the gentleman who ran it and then thought I could place creative people or I could help in this industry somehow. So he gave me an opportunity to help him fill a few freelance jobs and that first initiation into the field allowed me the possibility with Update itself to say, look, there's a creative field out there. They could use recruiters like us to help them with freelance projects. So can we go in this direction? And thankfully, they went for my idea, and so here we are 20 years later. <laughs> well, congratulations. That's a great success. It's great to see that you're in the industry. There's a lot of interest and in need to see um, people of color that are have the roles that you have, so I'm excited to have you um, share some of your insights. Can you give us a little bit more details on the kinds of roles that you um, recruit for and that you focus on? We focus on creative and production for print and interactive. We look for people who are interested in freelancing or in firm positions. Um, we also place copy, project management. So those are the areas that we really fall into. Whether you're doing creative production, whether you're online or print, we're the source for that kind of uh, those spots, those jobs, and that talent. Awesome. So to kick us off, the topic today is specifically focused on the creative um, world, but I think it's really appropriate for anybody that's mm -hmm, in the mm -hmm. industry that's really trying to transition. And you know, one of my suggestions to people is always, every two or three years, you want to really th rethink it and, mm -hmm. and, and take another stab at, at what the trends are, because things mm -hmm. are changing so quickly, especially with the influx of digital. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So what does transitioning mean to you? Transitioning means I'm moving from what I've traditionally done to the next phase of my career. Uh, it could be I've been in print, creative all this time and I want to move into digital. It could be that I've been a senior lead designer and I finally want to make that move into a more management role. Um, you know, even from I'm the art director and now I want to be a creative director. So transition is, is the move from where you currently are into something that you have no experience in. Broadly put, um, and tr some transitions are smaller, and some transitions are large. Some people leave the industry completely. Some people are brand new to the industry because they were like marketing professionals prior, and now they want to become new business PowerPoint artists all of a sudden because <laughs> they've got all these great skills and they're always writing. So um, transition is is that move, it's the conscious move, and I think you hit on something very important when you said look at your your work every couple of years because I don't think we get trained along the way to think about our careers that way. Especially when um, we don't have historically uh, 
a set of people that we're following in their footsteps, so to speak, when it comes to professions. Oftentimes, we're the first college graduate, or we're the first one to go into creative and advertising because your mother and father said, there's a job in that? Like, who does that? There's <laughs> you no money in that. An artist? You want to be an artist? No. <laughs> Sorry for that. But um, I think that's part of really examining and taking stock. And it doesn't take a lot of time. Look at yourself at, you know, look at the body of your work you did over the course of a year and say, okay, this is the good stuff. Let me, this was the stuff I just had to do to get by. And then these are the really key pieces. And what did I enjoy about that? You know, take your, you know, 10 minutes to think about yourself, honestly, about what the work was that you did and then, and think about what's next for yourself. So take us through, you know, you're sitting there as, as a, a creative mm -hmm. and you're really proud of all the work that you've done mm -hmm. um, and you know you need to make a change or there may be something that you have in your mind that you you see and you want to get mm -hmm. to. Take us through the steps of, of what you should be thinking about and how do you go about transitioning to a new role. Okay, so for me, I think that the thing is to think about what transition. Transition is not instant. A transition set your expectations. Transition is going to take you maybe a year when you look at where you are to where you want to go. Um, and what you're going to do along that year is first you're going to look at what is your body of work? Where are you right now? What is, what is in that portfolio? And then where is it you want to go? So if you've been in advertising, let's say you want to move into branding now, look at how much work did you do that was campaign oriented that really allowed the, the brand you were working on to move in a cohesive manner through multiple channels, get, um, get out to the public, get out their voice, get out their um, colors, their logo. And those are, when you look at those pieces, and you present your and you put together your portfolio, then you're telling a branding message versus an advertising message. So when you think about movement from one thing to the next, you're looking for, in essence, the pathways that connect you from one place to the other. So you're going from advertising to branding. You're looking at what were the campaigns that I worked on that really used the principles of the brand, uh, communicated the brand message in the advertising, and then promote those. Awesome. Okay. So it's it's sometimes hard to, you know, see our own selves mm -hmm. when it comes to portfolio mm -hmm. work. What's the best way to get some really honest feedback, and what's the best way to receive it? Um, okay, so feedback is hard. So uh, put on your your armor because you you don't want people to tell you your work is not as great as you think it is. And oftentimes you will find that they think your work is good and they'll just redirect you on how to present it. Getting feedback, look at other people's work and then ask people about your work. Don't be afraid to find a person in your company or make friends with um, a senior level person that can give you honest feedback on your work. Look to um, other designers and ask them what they think. Make friends, work and look in your network. And it's not natural for us to network amongst the other designers we know and say, look at my work, what did you think? But they'll give you real feedback about your work. Go to recruiters. It's there, they can be objective and they can be specialized, but if you're a branding, if you want to go into branding or you want to go into advertising and the recruiter really services advertising agencies, they're going to have a very great perspective on your book and tell you, you know, your story is great. We need you to put in these pieces or take out, put in these pieces, take out these pieces, have about 15 to 20 pieces that really show the arc of your career. So that first piece is very tantalizing and interesting and we want the person to look further and then it's slow build to the best piece that you've done in your book. And then, you know, like a good story, you peter out with a nice ta-da, goodbye, the end. And when you lay out your portfolio that way, someone will get the story of your career. 
Um, we often do it at Update. Uh, we'll get people in that we can see the potential in their work, but the layout of the book is, is a little scattered or it's not thought out well. It's the pieces are not strategically put together. So we'll guide you through putting the pieces in a format that will work. Even um, one of the key things is that a lot of the portfolios are online now, and it's the best way really to present yourself. And you can go to a Coraflot or a crop, coraflot.com or crop.com to put up your portfolio. Um, Wix Lounge, I also believe, has that ability to put up a free portfolio. And when you're putting in the pieces, separate out your work. Is it advertising? Is it marketing? Is it digital? Um, make categories so you, the pieces are self-explanatory. Give little blurbs underneath a piece so that the individual know what your participation to the piece was. Um, all of those little hints and those little details make the viewer understand that you're serious about it, you're good at what you do, and you will take care of them because you've taken care of yourself. So there's always a catch-22 um, mm -hmm. that frustrates candidates. Yeah. So if you're trying to get in somewhere where mm -hmm. you don't have an experience and you don't mm -hmm. have the demonstration of the work, um, whether it's digital, whether it's branding, or whatever it is, you mm -hmm. just you're on the outside, and mm -hmm. you don't have relationships. You don't have people. Um, how, what what do you tell people to kind of start building their repertoire and to demonstrate an ability to do the work, even though they haven't been given the opportunity to do the work? Spec work is big and a great tool. If you see a banner, if you let's say you want to design in advertising and you want to do digital design and you want to do websites and banners, items like that. The first thing to do is to, to show that you are, first of all, you're showing your design sense in your, in your portfolio because you've worked on other pieces on the print side. Now it's time to do the spec work and translate. Maybe you worked on a campaign for Tufts and it's a great campaign. Think about that campaign now digitally. What was the banner ad you would have designed? What is the website look like for our cups? And all of a sudden you have this great, these great ideas that you're doing spec work and layout work for that you can show. And you can say to the person that you're interviewing and who is looking at your book, I worked on the print side. I did have ideas that I felt would be executed well on the digital side, so I felt I should show them. True, um, Concept and creatives will look at spec work as well, especially when you're in that that transition phase and they realize you're moving from one thing to another. They they're taken by your initiative. They appreciate that you are doing the work to move forward, and they'll take a look at it and they'll give you feedback. Uh, most will give you feedback. There's still a few people, two percent lunacy factor. There's a lot of crazy out there, so. <laughs> Don't, don't worry, worry about, about the crazy, right? Yeah. <laughs> and this is important. Don't worry about crazy. And the critiques are not about you. They're about work. It's it's like when you were in school and you wrote an essay and your teacher told you you got to be because your your grammar was off. Critiquing work is about the work. It's not about you. So don't take it personally. And it's so key to to remember that, especially when you're trying to push yourself forward into something else. No one is trying to beat you up. They're really trying to just give you what they see. And that's what you take from it. Don't take the personal from it. Just take, all right, that's what you saw. I appreciate that. You have a number of people who have told you different things. Look at the feedback. You're intelligent. You're smart. You know where you want to go. Put it all together. It's not just one person. It's the mass. It's massing the, the information you got and then pushing it forward to your benefit. That's great advice. Um, I, think I want to touch on the, the FaceTime part on, on, on uh, getting feedback. So the mm -hmm. One Club does a great um, event in the fall called Hear All the Black People, where yeah. it's a great mm -hmm. way for mm -hmm. people to get feedback. And the AAF, and they, they have great experiences for people mm -hmm. to get portfolio feedback. Mm -hmm. um, so that's great for the entry and, and kind of mid-level Mm -hmm. um, and the senior level, the, I usually tell people to get involved in some of the portfolio um, reviews and portfolio, mm -hmm. um, the award experiences mm -hmm. to be judges on some of those. What mm -hmm. are some of the other ways that people should be getting FaceTime to build the relationships in the business? 
they should really be networking with their peers and senior management. And that will come in the form of conferences, that will come in the form of uh, meetups, especially in, in New York, you have a, a vast number of meetups for creatives that are, are held on professional sites. So you'll be at HUGE, or you'll be at AOL, and your peers are there. So communicate with them, and that's a, that's a great way. Networking is, gonna, is more key than ever, because when we came up, we were taught just do a good job and someone will notice you. That's, that, that does happen, it's not, it, but it's a slower track. If you really want to be noticed, you're gonna to have to find your networking self or your, your, your extroverted self and go out and take the time to connect with people and meet with people. And there are a lot of um, associations out there now that are really putting on events for people to commune and meet each other, um, the Madison Brown, uh, fellowship. Uh, the um, Ad Color does a, a phenomenal job of bringing people together a couple of times a year. And you'll meet decision makers in those venues. Um, it's really important to start to go out and communicate with the professionals in your industry at the level that you are. Uh, most people put out what they're going to be doing on something like a LinkedIn or they're doing these massive email that um, will publicize an event, uh, they advertise their events. So just spend a little time looking, you can Google Bing, take a little time and look for what are the events in your area and really start to talk to people because that's the most important thing to move your career forward. With the saturation of individuals coming into our field, um, learning software, the competition is stiff and it, it really doesn't matter who you know and where you're seen, and then who you build trust with and rapport with. I also want to mention mentorship and sponsorship. When you're working for a company, look to make friends with senior level people who, you know, there, there's two types. There's going to be the person who will give you good advice, and then there's going to be the person that helps you move your career forward. And I, I learned this later later in my career. It's, it is important to identify those people, get to know those individuals, um, look to them for guidance because they've been through, the, the, they've taken the path that you're on, so they know where some of the, the rocky parts are and the ditches and the holes in it. So look to them for advice. There's also, you know, I also say do the five minute favor. If you are a print creative and you want to be a digital creative, walk over and say, is there anything I can help with? And sure, I'll be, be glad to give you any assistance you need. I realize that you need somebody who's got some great Photoshop skills and great with Photoshop. Let me help you out for a minute. And, and those little favors, those pieces of courtesy, professional courtesy, that requires you to use your skill is what can, can create rapport and trust. And then all of a sudden, someone is saying, you know, that guy is really good. He's awesome. He helped me out. Can we give him a shot? That's how those things happen. Awesome. Thank you for that. Sure. Um, please take a look at our events calendar. We're, we're going to be posting as many of these uh, types of events that will allow you to get um, your portfolio feedback and network with your peers. That's kind of the goal of Thrive, and we're excited about that. So if you hear about events that you think we should be sharing, if you've been to one that you think was pretty awesome, let us know, and we want to post that. My last bit question to you mm -hmm. is, what? how do you thrive? What, do you, what works for you? Running my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> how do I thrive? You know, I, I actually do a lot of attending events, I will talk to everybody and anybody because you never know where the golden nugget is going to come from and you never know where the small piece of wisdom comes from. I mean, even when we were talking about doing this, we were like, you know, that's a great topic. I'm like, we could do this and we could probably talk about a couple of other things. It has really been amazing and thank you for inviting me to the Thrive Talk. 
but it's really getting out there and talking to people. The infusion of information, the infusion of contact with other individuals, it sparks your creativity. And then you become creative yourself. And then you can pass that along. Well, thank you very much. Um, thank you again to our underwriting sponsor, Microsoft, that, that allows us to do these events. The next one coming up is with Sabrina Prince after Thanksgiving, after you've eaten everything. Um, she's going to be talking about the big trends in the pharmaceutical side and leadership on the account management world. Um, if you have more questions for Natalie, you can share them on the chat screen or in her contact information is listed on her bio. Um, so thanks for sharing yes. it with you. And enjoy your day, everyone. Thanks for joining us.